Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today, 3.0 beta has come out, which means there will be no new features added into 3.0. And what we're having right now is what we're going to have in December when 3.0 is really going to be officially released. And in this case, uh, people ask the question, is that possible to randomly instance an object from the collection in geometry nodes? And the answer is yes. And then he added another requirement that he wants to only pick this object from the collection for once, not twice. So you, you pick them and this object will not be instanced again. Okay. In this case, this is also possible. We have to use a workaround, and this workaround is not very pleasant to use, but it's not also too difficult. So let's just start. So here we in Blender, and I've already created a collection of objects, and to make them more visible, I put a single material of random color. Basically, idea is object info, random, white noise, color output. So different object has different index, and they can uh, finally output a different color from this white noise texture. Okay, so next thing we first need to discuss is the normal method to instance different objects from the collection. So here, let's turn off these instances. I'm going to delete the rest of collection, which uh, we're not going to use. And within this collection, I'm going to create a plane. And I'm going to add a geometry nodes modifier. Actually, uh, first, let's talk a little bit about the indices creation of our object. So if you go to the viewport overlays, then you go to the vertices, you can actually see how these vertices being created. And I would like to discuss a very important concept which we will use later uh, when we are randomizing the indices, uh, is how the computer actually assign the indices. So now we have a plane and we can see the vertices indices is 0, 1, 2, 3. So it does not go in a kind of order as normal human usually do. Uh, I think uh, we either always clockwise or counterclockwise, but the computer do this kind of zigzag way. Another important thing is first count, first served. So if I create this loop cut, so let's duplicate this point, and we will see how vertices will be changed uh, in different cases. So if I create a loop cut in the middle of this plane, then you can see four and five is created in middle. So Maybe in other cases, we might think, uh, I'm going to go count all the vertices clockwise. So one, two, three, four, five, something like that. But the computer does not do it in such a way. Okay. Uh, so this, this kind of concept also applies if we're trying to extrude, then we have the four and five in the other places. So maybe at some point they may look at 100% the same mesh but their instances, uh, their index will be completely or dramatically different depending on how, what's the order you create all these kind of vertices and the edges. Here I want to show another example if I delete this uh, second grid and uh, remake a new plane. So we have the same starting indices, 0, 1, 2, 3. Uh, first the COM, first the serve rule also applies to subdivide. So maybe I cut like this. Then I have this weird indices ordered 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 to 12. Okay, so this is kind of important as we move on. So here, let's firstly instance uh, the collection onto these points. I'm going to scale up these instances, otherwise it's probably too small. Let's point instance, uh, instancing on points. And we'll pick a collection, which is our instances plug in the geometries, then it will instance the whole collection as a whole, uh, the collection as a whole. Okay, so because this is how the collection looks like, and you just instance the plane, cube, whatever stuff. Uh, in this case, I'm going to separate the children, and then reset children so that everything goes to the origin within the collection. Uh, now everything has been instanced on the points, but if we pick instance, then every point will only take one object from the collection. Here, it looks like we're having a kind of random order, but this is not true. This randomness is a kind of illusion, which is due to the weird index uh, order 
of how this uh, grid is being generated. So, so we have 0, 1, 2, 3. Okay, so this is the case. Uh, which means if you're not using a this kind of weird grid, you're using a mesh line. So let's take the, because we have about eight instances, so let's mesh line to eight. And let's change that to 0 0.1, or no, just that 0. Point, yes. Uh, I think uh, one will be fine. Okay, so this is what we're having. So everything runs in an order, as we can see. Let's did, uh, turn down these vertices. And uh, if I increase this count, then you can see the list repeat. So we have a circle, and then we start a circle. We have a comb, we have a comb, we have a cube, we have a cube. So the list will repeat. In this case, there is no randomness. To make up the randomness, what we need to do is to attribute the capture, uh, to attribute the statistics, and take the maximum index, and we need a geometry to evaluate the maximum index, uh, which is our geometry. So basically, we know the maximum index is about maybe seven, uh, and then we plug these index. Uh, let's then plug a random value integral and this maximum index will be the maximum of random value and then we plug this into index list so now we are actually having a complete random order of uh, this kind of index generation and you can change the random seed so it's completely random however here there is a huge problem that we encounter uh, which is a single monkeys has been instanced twice okay so this is sometimes not what we're looking for. So let's uh, take the count into eight, because if I have eight objects, then I have eight. And I do not want this result. I want uh, every object to be only instanced once. So eight locations should have eight different objects, and I want to shuffle this kind of list and the position for this setup. Here we have to create our own uh, index list. So here, let's just uh, rename this object as GN. And I'm going to create a new object that holds a, let's create a new index. So let's rename that as an index. So with a new index, I'm going to create a new node tree, which is called index. Here, I'm going to take a mesh line. And then we're going to reset the position of this mesh line. And uh, we're going to set the position based on uh, using the index. So within geometry node 3, we have this part. Let's select this part and hit Control C, so we copy the whole part. You can also hit Control G to make it in, into a group node. Uh, I think it's okay. Then in the index, just hit the Control V to paste this. And then we take this random value. So we have this random value being generated. Let's see the value that we actually see. Because this may cause a, a, actually an illusion, because we do may not have enough points that you fill every spot. So mesh two points. And uh, let's visualize that better with increasing these vertices. So now we can actually see, although previously we see a line, but uh, the reality is that we did not fill the location here and there because this random value being generated is overlapping to each other. So maybe the some, some points have about two vertices being generated in this case. So in this case, you just increase the count. What you can do, I think, is to take a mass. You, this is not mandatory, but just to kind of make it a little bit more procedural, uh, maximum plus one, and multiply with a number. This number will be the amount of loop you run this random number. So you run that six time, you make sure that you finally fill all these count points. Uh, this is very important because you really want to make sure that you fill all the points. Uh, and now we have this kind of overlapping geometry. If we disable these matched points and move these points away, and let's apply our geometry nodes modifier, and let's take a look with the vertices we created, 
then there the vertices number is actually kind of horrible you can see there is this huge overlapping uh, from points to points however if we take a world modifier then we are going to eliminate all this kind of overlapping so create another copies and we will see the actual effect and because of the rule that we mentioned earlier that the first come first served that's why the indices has been randomized 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and you can def this is technically procedural because you can change the seed of these kind of random values so here let's add a weird modifier so this is the index we generated you do not need to be misled with these uh, indexes because simply this is kind of a blender limitation at this moment that it does not show the result from the modifier but rather show the result from the original mesh once we have this random list next thing we do is simply just going to uh, transfer this list so how should I say index transfer this list into our collection so in our original node tree previously we have this kind of setup uh, which would generate a random index, but it has overlapping. That's why Susan has two, Sophia has two kind of stuff. Uh, so here, we're no longer going to use this part. We're going to use the index that we generated for our index object. So let's just select it from this index. And I'm going to transfer attributes. The attribute that we transfer is actually the uh, the vector because we're going to transfer the position knowing that we generate the position in a way of 0 0 0 and 1 1 1 so if you 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 put the uh, you try you convert them into the in integer then it's 0 1 something something like that okay that's why how this works in this case So in this case, let's uh, we can directly plug this attribute into index, and immediately you can see a change. So we randomize this list. Uh, the order has been changed, but we do not have a new uh, a kind of overlapping geometry. So we only have one Susan, we only have one cube, we only have one plane, one torus, one circle, and so on and so forth. More importantly, what we can do here is that going to the index. Uh, node tree we can actually change the random seeds and you can see we shuffle we're shuffling the list but the object are kept as a only being selected once there may be box being created at some moment in such a case you just increase more numbers so that you make sure it really fills the whole gap okay so you must make sure there's no gap no no points gap being generated otherwise you will just have a repetition but uh, this is basically all about it so this is a workaround is not a super pleasant uh, because of the fact that this wheel modifier is not within geometry nodes that's why we have to create additional object to hold additional wheel modifier however if this wheel modifier which I think that the the actual node that will be into the geometry node is called merge by distance. Once that node lands in in 3.1 or something like that, then you should be able to finish this functionality within a single geometry node tree uh, or even simplify the entire workflow using a group node. So this is it for 3.0. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.